right so hello and welcome back to books and things and welcome to another video and today i thought i would do another author spotlight and talk about one of my favorite authors natasha pulley Natasha Pulley is an author I discovered nearly two years ago and just completely fell in love with her work. She has written three novels, The Watchmaker of Filigree Street, The Bedlam Stacks, and also um, The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow. So The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow comes out today when you are watching this video. It is absolutely amazing. I'll talk about it a bit more later, but I highly, highly recommend going out and buying it as soon as you can. It's so good. Anyway, what I thought I would do today is, um, in the first half of this video, just tell you in general about why I love Natasha Pulley, why I think her writing is amazing, why I love her books so, so much, and then I will go through each of her three books in turn, tell you a little bit about them and why I love them especially. To begin with, one of the reasons why I absolutely love the work of Natasha Pulley is because her books look at really fascinating periods and really fascinating areas of history. The Watchmaker of Filigree Street is set in 19th century London, but bits of it are also set in 19th century Japan and in part we follow Japanese characters living in London. The Bedlam Sacks is set in 19th century Peru, how cool is that? And The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow is set entirely in 19th century Japan. I love the way that Natasha Pulley looks fascinatingly at history with a very like clear and accurate and fascinating exploration. She clearly knows her stuff and has done so much research. I love how she fully captures the feeling of the 19th century in these very very different places that she explores in her books and not just looking at Victorian London which so many books look at but also different aspects of Victorian London that we don't often see explored and also like 19th century Peru, 19th century Japan, you know places and time periods I haven't read that much about just explored so well and just in such a fascinating way. Another thing I love about her books is that she is a real master of atmosphere. I think she creates atmosphere incredibly well, incredibly cleverly, not just with her setting and her exploration of setting and culture, but also with her exploration of um, what it feels like to be in a particular place and how a particular place can give you a particular feeling, um, especially I think in The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow, just the atmosphere of 19th century Japan is conjured so amazingly. Another thing I love about her works is that all of her books have a touch of magic in them, like a little hint of the supernatural, not too much, but just enough to like up the emotional poignancy of the book um, in a way. Like I feel like all of the magic that exists in these three books, and there is a little bit of magic in all of them, I feel like the magic that exists in these three books is there to make the human stories more emotional and more powerful rather than just there for the sake of magic like it all has a non-magical reason for being there in a way which I just love and I think is incredible and it just has the perfect balance for me I like a little bit of magic especially in historical fiction but I don't I never like too much and I like that there is just the right amount and it's just perfect it's not the most important thing in these books but it is there and I love it as well Another thing that Natasha Pulley does amazingly is her characterization. Her characters are absolutely brilliant in all three of these books and they feel so thoroughly real and so thoroughly engaging and I just believe the characters and the relationships between them especially. I just thoroughly believe in all of these people. Um, the Lost Future of Pepper Harrow is a sequel to The Watchmaker of Frilliger Street and I surprise myself in a way by how emotional I felt reading this book because I was just so happy to be back with the characters from The Watchmaker of Field Street because I loved them so much. How much I loved The Lost Teacher of Pepper Harrow reminded me of how attached I had got to the characters in The Watchmaker of Field Street. There is also one character from The Watchmaker of Field Street who turns up in the Bedlam Stacks and that also made me hugely happy because I was so excited to see them because I had just fallen in love with all of these characters because her characterization is so good, so fully fledged and complicated, like all of the characters are really really complicated, the relationships between each other are really complicated, nothing is clear cut but they're also so incredibly fully formed and so well developed and so human, I just, I love it, I love it so much. Another thing that I love about her work is her writing, she writes beautifully in that way that is both atmospheric and poetic but also like never gets in the way of the story and is there to serve its purpose, I think her writing is just amazing um, and in many ways it does feel quite 19th century I think she has a really good like 19th century turn of phrase which obviously I love but also it's really accessible it's really readable and it's just so good like The Watchmaker of Filigree Street I genuinely read it in one day it is so readable and her writing style is just excellent another thing that I really really love about her work is how quirky and fun it is like 
yes, these books deal with many serious themes, and yes, these books are incredibly emotionally poignant and powerful at points, but they're also just incredibly good fun with like quirky bits of magic and clockwork and entertaining moments of great fun. In The Watchmaker of Filigree Street and The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow, there is a little clockwork octopus called Katsu who just like has a little bit of a mind of his own and that that detail in itself is just amazing and I love it. Another thing that I love about her books is what amazing plots they have. They're all sort of paced perfectly with just the right amount of calm and the right amount of drama and the right amount of sudden turning points and like little mysteries to be solved within it. I love a historical fiction book that has a bit of a mystery or something you don't fully understand until the end and her books are full of all of that in such a clever wonderful way. But I think the thing that I like most about Natasha Burley's books is the balance of everything I have said above. The fact that her novels are fascinating explorations of a particular historical time period full of beautiful description and amazing writing but they also have incredibly human characters and really fast exciting plotting that is incredibly dramatic and like has you on the edge of your seat because you're so excited to know what will happen next. Her books are just amazing. They're just so perfectly balanced and I love them a lot and I just cannot wait to see what she writes next. So those are some of the reasons why I love Natasha Pulley. I think she is an absolutely amazing writer and I just love her work so, so much. So I'm going to talk about her three books. Usually when I make these videos, I talk about the books in order from my least favourite to my favourite. However, because they're sort of interlinked, I'm going to talk about them in the order that they are published, which is the order I think you should read them in. Um, I think it's important personally to read The Watchmaker of Fiddler Street before you read either of these two books. Definitely before The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow, which is its sequel directly, and also before The Bedlam Stacks, which is like interconnected to it slash has a character from The Watchmaker of Fiddler Street turn up in it, which I don't think you would get as much out of if you hadn't read this first. Right, anyway. The Watchmaker of Filigree Street is an amazing novel. It is set in 19th century London and we follow a young man called Nathaniel. He wanted to be a musician, wanted more from his life than he has, but his sister is a widow with two children who he has to support. So he lives in London in a very small lodgings, working as a clerk in the telegram office, until one day, suddenly he gets home from work to find a pocket watch on his pillow. He has no idea why this pocket watch is there, but this pocket watch ends up saving his life in a roundabout way that I won't explain, um, and that leads him to track down the person who made this pocket watch, Kata Mori, a Japanese watchmaker living in London on Filigree Street, who Nathaniel ends up lodging with and kind of forming this friendship with. There is so much that I love about this book, and I don't even know where to start. I made a full individual review about it at the time, so I will link that down below. But like I said, I read this in one day and it just completely swept me away. Partly I love it because it is set in 19th century London but also has bits of 19th century Japan and 19th century Japanese culture and I'm really interested in the history of Japan as well as being massively into Victorian Britain. I also love the magic element in this, I love the central like relationship in this. But Nathaniel as a character is fantastic, Kata Mori is just brilliantly, perfectly crafted and this book just filled me with such love and such joy um, and I just completely fell in love with it. It's a new favourite novel, probably my favourite historical novel I've ever read. It's just astounding and I just completely adored it so much. After reading The Watchmaker of Philip Street, which you should all read, please please read it because it's so so good, then I would read The Bedlam Stacks. This book follows a young man called Merrick um, who used to work for the Foreign Office um, but has sort of retreated in life due to an injury in his leg. He lives with his brother who he finds quite difficult until one day an old friend of his appears and ends up bringing Merrick with him on a trip to Peru to collect certain plants um, and they end up going to this place called Bedlam. But in order to get there they have to be guided by someone and the man that becomes their guide ends up taking on a kind of significance in Merrick's life and changing the way Merrick views 19th century Peru and the mission that he is on and everything around him. It's incredible, it's so powerful, it's so dramatic, it's so fantastic. Like I said there is a character from the watchmaker of Filigree who turns up in here in the most amazing way and the way magic um, and kind of the supernatural element is used in this book is just fantastic. Um, the ending is so moving and I just I just absolutely loved it too. It's so good. Finally there the novel The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow. 
this you need to have read The Watchmaker of Fill Street before reading, but you don't really need to have read The Bedlam Stacks before reading. Um, and this follows on from The Watchmaker of Fill Street, following the characters from The Watchmaker of Fill Street, following Nathaniel and other characters around him. I can't say too much more because I don't want to spoil The Watchmaker of Fill Street, but for some reason at the beginning of this book, Nathaniel um, is sent by the Foreign Office to Japan in order to find out about something strange that is going on there. And we follow a lot of the characters from The Watchmaker of Filigree Street and many new characters, including Mrs. Pepper Harrow mentioned in the title. And we follow them and we work out what's going on in Japan. There are so many things that I love about this book. It is incredibly powerful and incredibly moving and incredibly beautiful. And the way it picks up from The Watchmaker of Filigree Street and takes things that I kind of felt were resolved in The Watchmaker of Filigree Street but explores them in such greater depth is just amazing. The love story in this is beautiful, the magical element is incredible, the way this looks at memory and time is fantastic and the kind of like, not exactly central mystery element but for a lot of this book you don't know why what's happening is happening and there's a point near the end when you realise why all of these things have been happening and it is just the most beautiful powerful moment like ever it's just amazing um i don't think i realized how much i had fallen in love with the characters of the watchmaker of failure street until i read this and was just so happy to be back amongst them again and i think it is a more than worthy sequel to the watchmaker of failure street like i love this book so much and i wouldn't have said that it needed a sequel but now that i've read this it did need a sequel and needed this sequel and it was amazing and i'm so glad a sequel exists because it was just perfect and it just added to the perfection that is the watchmaker of filigree street was incredibly dramatic incredibly exciting it's nearly all set in 19th century japan which i loved it looks fantastically at um so many different things at love at relationships at um feeling apart from society at power and gender and parenthood and culture clash and so many other things it's just amazing like i said this book comes out today i would highly highly recommend going and buying it and reading it if you've read the watchmaker of the Street and loved it you have to read this you really really do and if you haven't read any of natasha pulley's books yet then please please do she is an amazing amazing writer definitely one of my favorite contemporary authors and i can cannot wait to read everything she ever writes in the future. So that is all that I wanted to say today. I hope this has been an interesting video. Please let me know down below in the comments if you've read anything by Natasha Pulley. And if you haven't, I hope this video encourages you. Her books are just amazing. And that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.